What's up, it's your boy, celebrity photographer Felix the Child Jr., and I have my special guest today, a former junior wel welterweight champion of the world, Kendall Holt. How you doing, my brother? Doing good, man. I'm doing real good. That's what's <laughs> up, man. Thank you for coming by my spot, Media City. Uh, be my first guest on Media City Radio. I'm comfortable with that position, number one. I'm actually comfortable with that position. Well, you held that spot a few, t you know, for a few years, so I think that's that's in your your comfort zone. Yeah, that's why I said I'm comfortable with. <laughs> so, what's new with you, my brother? What's new? Yes, sir. All right, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let the cat out the bag, but I don't even know if I'm supposed to know yet. Okay. All right. So, my last fight was February twenty second, two thousand thirteen. Five, roughly five years ago. Lamont Peterson, I know. I Lamont Peterson, I took an L. That was for the championship of the world. I took an L. That was my last fight. All right, so I haven't been back. I haven't been back in the ring yet. I mean, a couple of things fell through. I kind of tried to get through, get back there. It didn't really. Things wasn't working out. You know, I was still trying to get my my mind right and everything. But the good news is, five years later, I don't like I said. I don't know if I'm supposed to know this, but I'm being inducted into the New Jersey Boxing <laughs> Hall of Fame. Oh, wow. That's amazing, my brother. Congratulations. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Definitely deserve that, man. It's crazy because I was just talking about that fight uh, with wifey the other day. It was like, man, how time flies. Since I was like, I said, that's when I started a, a Instagram war because you was like, little man look just like wifey. All he got is your skin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell no. No, he doesn't. Yeah, I said, no, he look like me. I said, we're going to find out right now, damn it. Let's take a picture and put it online. And we had like 100 people say like 97 of them said wifey. I'm like, Yo, yo. And, and I'm like, of course you'd love to hear it. You was right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Because people say, oh, you can't be right all the time. And I'm not right all the time. But what I know, I know. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm not going to get here and tell you, like, nah, the white balance is off. <laughs> you know what I mean? The exposure should be this. The lens should be that. Because I don't know that stuff. But when I say something, generally, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know. I'm like, man, I was like, nah, he looks like his dad. Everybody's like, nah, man, he looks like his mom. Nah, man. And now they'll be like, okay, now nah, he looks mixed, but he still looks more like his mom. All like his mother. Man, you can see all in when he smile, yeah. when he crying, like, not in buff face. Yeah, eyes especially. You know what I'm saying? And with you, and then look, look, this, this, and you know, the eyes, the eyes are everything because look, when somebody take a picture and they want to, they want to use it as an ad or something and they don't have permission, mm -hmm. what do they do? They block out the eyes. Right. So the eyes are everything. Exactly. So if his eyes look like her, you just admit it that he don't look like you. He look like her. You got his father's smile. That's it. <laughs> you got to try to find something, huh? <laughs> yeah, no, I was talking about that. I was just, um, was another uh, boxing fan, and he was just like, you know, what you thought about that fight? And I said, you know, it's crazy. We was there. You know, I was talking about how even Brandon and Plexico, everybody was upset because that was Peterson's first fight after his whole steroid situation layoff. He was out of out of the ring for like 18 months, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. And what's crazy is they were asking for your blood and urine after the fight, but I don't recall them asking him for the for that. And yeah. I remember how everybody got so upset about that because that was your first fight after being, you know, of course, you know, failed steroid uh, tests, mm -hmm. and you would fi figure your first fight back. You know, of course, that's like, I would think mandatory that... Check that blood, right? Check that blood, check that I, urine. But, you, you know, you know the, the thing is, with that fight, like, um, so ES Sports Center had the whole big thing saying that my... Te At first it says his test came back that he failed. Right. And then, it's, then a couple of days later, a day went by or so, they said, nah, it was Kendall who failed. I said, me? I don't even take vitamins. <laughs> Don't you don't diet at all, just yeah, for the record. I don't, I don't do none of that. So, so I'm like, that's impossible. So, you know, when he, when they take the sample, there's two samples. Mm -hmm. So my lawyer, Pat English, told them, all right, well, test the second sample. Mm -hmm. So they tested the second sample. That came back negative. Okay. So the ESPN had to run a retraction. Like, but it wasn't all crazy the way it was when they saying I was I failed. Like the right. blocks picked it up saying, oh, he's cheating in the second and third. Right. But when that when that when it came out that I was clean, right. then nobody don't pose nothing about it. Of course, of course, of course. So then, but look, but then why they never tested his second sample? Of course, that's crazy. Why they like, did it? I don't have a a history, history of, of failing drug tests. 
And then uh, when we tried to get... You have a history of not wanting to make way. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, I'm, I swear to God, let me tell you right now, boxing is easy. Right. Boxing is easy. What's hard about boxing, making weight, most people, I'm not going to say most people, a lot of fighters, their whole camp is dedicated to losing weight. Right. And I think, I mean, I don't know if Lamont was on anything. It, it really didn't matter because after the, like the third round and fourth round of that fight, right. I had nothing. Right. I was exhausted from making weight. Right. Exhausted. And uh, technically, I don't remember nothing after the first round. Not that I got hit. Right. It was just like, it's not that I got hit hard. And it's not, I mean, he, 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 oh, he beat me up. But I wasn't like physically hurt right. as much as I was fucking exhausted. Like, so when the referee stopped it, it was like, whew, I was tired as hell, man. Now, I remember it was like the night before I was using the, the room, like uh, just trying to lose weight. And you like got the, the heat on like 110 degrees. I'm like, you had like two sweatsuits on. I'm like, bro, what's going on? I'm like, you're going to wind up, going to be passed out before the fight. See, but the thing, the thing is, is like uh, people diet six, eight weeks through camp and all of that. Mm -hmm. I've never done that. Never. I've been, all right, up until my, my that fight, that, that fight made my 13th year as a professional boxer. But I've never dieted. I've never did anything. Like generally... When I'm getting ready for the fight, like I'll come into the day to weigh in and I'll be seven, eight pounds overweight. And for me, I was like, all right, well, I'll just sweat it out. I'll go run a treadmill, sit in the sauna a couple times that day or the, the night before I start. And then that, all right, the night before the weigh in, I'm like seven, eight pounds. So the day I wake up on the weigh in, I'm maybe four pounds over, right. four or five pounds over. So then I'll run on a treadmill with the sauna suit on. I'll uh, jump in the steam room and all that. And this is this has worked my entire career. Don't realize you're dehydrating yourself that way. Dehydrating myself is one thing. But now when I went into the Lamont Peterson fight, now I'm not 25, 26 years old. And that didn't do on me. I'm 31. Right. So my body different. Of course. So, so that no, no matter what. Like it just felt like the weight was not coming off, so, um, so like I was saying, whether he was on something or not, he didn't need it because I basically killed myself and handed him and let him keep the championship. That's what we've been telling you for years, one forty-seven. <laughs> you know what? And uh, uh, Bob Aram, when I was with Top Rank, um, Bob Aram told Brandon Jacobs, who was my acting manager at the time, was telling him to move up. To 47. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, for everybody, like, go for, I'm like, for what? Like, you having that much problems there, 47, that's a lot easier for well, you. Well, you know what? Like, all right, so. Did something. you feel like you were going to lose your speed at 147 over 140? It was just that I felt like I had an advantage over everybody else because, you know, in, in, in life, I'm a regular sized man, a regular sized human. But in boxing, for my weight class, I'm big. I'm like a monster, right. especially with my punching power. Right. So it was like, all right, well, why am I going to get move up and then, you know, and then and fit in while I'm at this weight and I'm standing up? Right. All right, so take me back to 2011. I'm um, I'm I'm flying to L.A. to fight Danny oh, Garcia. Yeah, Danny, yeah. Garcia. Danny Garcia. So uh, so the same thing. Like, all my fights I won after I defended my championship of the world, if I, if I fought above 140... I won. If I had to make 40, I lost those fights. And it didn't take me to, you know, after after um, the loss to, to Peterson, like, everything went downhill. Like, I didn't have any promotional company. Like, and, you know, when I was in my investments, my, uh, my, the bigger amounts of my investments came to me trying to build my own entertainment company. Of course. And I was invested in my R&B artists and my rappers and my studios and all that stuff. So all of my bulk of my money was out there. Of course. So then after that fight, that fight didn't, you know, I got paid from that fight, but not enough. And then after that fight, like I had no more fights coming in. So, you know, all this money going out, nothing, nothing coming in. in. Right. 
You know what I'm saying? I hit a speed bump. So I ended up going back to school for dialysis. And it wasn't till then when I went back to school and started learning about the human body. I learned about, you know, uh, medicines and herbal things and uh, our organs. And it's just, and then that instant, it hit me like I was killing myself. And I tell my son all the time, yo, please listen to me. Because I'm fucked up right now. Because I didn't listen. And I don't want you to be that way. So I'll give them tangible examples. Like, like where, we, where I live at now is not the same where I used to live back while, when I was up. Right. I'm like, and, I, and I'll show them, like, look, we live okay, mm -hmm. but look where we lived before. Right. He was younger, but mm -hmm. he, rem he still remembers. So I'm like, you know, this, they, use me as an example for a person that didn't listen and that didn't work hard enough. Not hard enough, well, hard enough and long enough. Where I can sustain this type of life that I was living, right. so I, you know, I give him all these examples that he can readily identify and see with his own eyes. Um, but getting back to it, all right. So I fought um, after I lost to Garcia. That was at, that was at 140. Mm -hmm. That was become number one in the world. Mm -hmm. So I lost that fight. That was gonna be number one in WBC, and I lost that fight. So um, so I so I got a comeback fight. And I made 143, and I fought another former champion in the world, and I won. Right. So then, so then I'm I'm start thinking like, you know, after I lost to Peterson, I'm thinking back like, damn, like all the fights that I won was above 140. Right. And after I lost to Bradley, right. and then so I start thinking another like, crazy one. <laughs> so I start so I start thinking like, damn, so maybe I should move up. But at that at after the loss, it was like. You know, pretty people pretty much had written me off. Like, all right, his best days are behind him, right. and I kind of went along with that. Like, because losing, especially when you feel like you've put your all into everything, so losing for me was it was emotional, and I just, of course. and then I didn't want to. I made up all these excuses. People, you know, I got close friends. You, Brandon, uh, my boy, Baby Fats. My, my right hand dub, everybody like, yo, you should get back, you should get back, you should get back. And I'm just like, you know, I kind of like make these excuses, like, yeah, you know, because I don't want to put my all into it and then come up short again. Right. I think that was the big thing. And then, but then I started realizing, all right. That's that championship mentality. Baby. That's not. That's, that's not right. champion behavior. Exactly. Hashtag champion behavior. <laughs> but so, you know, I was like, you know what? This year, 2018, I've been out. My body healed. Like, I'm not suffering from anything. I'm going to go ahead and give it a run. That's what's up, man. You know, I'm always one of your biggest supporters, brother. I appreciate it. <laughs> Yo, we go back a long time. Of course, my brother. Of course. You, know you did mean? my first flyer. When, I, when I got the flyer, we took the pictures, and I had the flyers. Like, yeah, oh, I look, I I'm on the flyer. I remember I said, when Johnny brought you to the studio still. I remember Keyshawn was like six months old. Hey, he was a baby. Well, he's a 14 now, 15? You about to be fifteen in a couple months. <laughs> couple months. Be fifteen. Now, that's crazy. No, but it's funny what you what, uh, what you said earlier about you know trying to tell your son how to follow your footsteps. That's the whole point of me creating this this facility, Media City and Cave, is you know to inspire the next generation of creatives and kind of let them know about my experience or let them speak to people who had success and but if it's how important it is to make the right decisions. We need truth. Shout out to truth. Yeah, go, yeah. Cause somebody called truth. Truth is the oh, is the bomb publicist. Yeah. But I, I don't like people like see. All right, like see, we can sit down right here mm -hmm. in an intimate setting, and I can kick it with you. Right. But you want me to? You want to bring all these people in the room and have me stand up there on the podium and then just start speaking like. That's hard. Like, if we was in a circle or well, You something always tell like me that, I have to open up, right? Yeah, you know I'm, I'm saying? saying, but that's, I mean, <laughs> you, I mean, your field requires you to do that. Me, I get on the mic, I talk my shit, and then I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, have, you always tell them you got a PhD in professional shit talking. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and you know what? And I speak the truth, too. <laughs> Definitely, my brother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, cause, cause, like, cause, when you did your speech, when we did the grand opening. Oh yeah, we looking down. Time, looking, looking down. down the paper, like, I know, I know, I know. Everybody was saying that, and I was like, man, shout out to. <laughs> shout well, I'm out. On, I'm working on it, my you brother. Got the paper right here. Like, I was like, man, I, I, it was so much stress. 
trying to get the facility done in time for the grand opening. By then, I was like, I was trying to memorize it. And I was like, you know what? It's not working out too well. I was in the back like, duh, 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 get and I kept messing up. I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to read it. I barely slept that day, neither, you know, the night before. You know, we, we was here at like 4 o'clock in the morning trying to get everything set up. I was just like, oh, nah. I'm like, man, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It, it, even, I mean, even, even, yeah, that's what even Pastor said. Pastor was like, great speech, man, but you got to look he up. He, he said, yo, he said, eye contact is important. You, you had such a powerful speech, but, you know, you didn't give no eye contact or no. saw the people's reaction or held, yeah. or held you know, pause for pause, a second. Like, like, right, pause. while they clapping, pause, yeah. you know, pause for a moment. But it's okay. You know, I'm always been behind the camera, yeah. so it's new for me. But you know what I mean. But you was like looking at the looking at the paper. Hey, <laughs> this this how you was. I I I want to. Hey, wife, my kids. Yeah, I want to thank them too. Like, <laughs> but this was. <clears throat> Tell with Gemini's, right? This is my Gemini brother. Yeah, you know what I mean? And I'm all the way in the back. He's like, you know I want to start heckling. Yeah, he started laughing at me. He's like, yo, I'm going to make a meme out of this. Yo. Yeah, this is how you don't speak yo, when you give it a speech. I forgot. At the, at the end, I started saying something. I, but I wanted to heckle you the whole time. I, but, I, but I was like, you know what? He's nervous. I'm just going to let him get it out. So, oh, man. So what you think about how um, this new generation of music is? My brother, as you can see, the shirt. March 9th, greatest rapper of all time, died today. We got to pay our respects. You know Man. what I'm saying? Who's your favorite artist at the moment? You know what I, you know what I listen to? Mm -hmm. In my truck, most of the time, 90s R&B. My favorite artist right out right now is probably Drake. I, this new hip hop, I, I don't know. My, my, you know, I guess I'm the old head now. Right. Like it's, it's, I guess it be maybe because it's not geared toward me, and it's you know hip hop is generally geared toward the younger generation. But like just listening to it, I'm like, well, I know I'm, I, don't, I, I don't know. I don't. I'm listening. Uh, uh, you know, my son is back from the army, so of course they hear the music coming from the third floor, and I'm like, love it, right? Yo, he's having it pumping, and I'm like, what are you listening to? I'm like, as much great music as I've been putting into your ears over these years. And he'd be quick to say, now nah, he loved 90s hip hop. You know what I'm saying? He's like, he's always playing, you know, Biggie, Pun, you know what I'm saying, Mob Deep, Nas, you know what I'm saying? And But he's just like, you know, all his friends listen to Man. what we call mumble rap. Yeah, it's like <laughs> nowadays, all you got to do is talk about popping pills or, I mean, I mean, the lyrics is, I don't, like, just the whole the whole thing is like everybody got tattoos on their face and everybody name is little something. Little sit your ass down. I don't know. <laughs> but but I don't know. It's like I don't know. The, the music is not it's, it's not captivating me. Like sometimes you will hear a, a hook that, that's pretty cool that you right. you know you heard a while. But it's like my son like, oh look listen to this. This this little this little Uzi or this little this little nigga from down the street. I don't know. I'm like, why everybody got little funny name? Exactly. Is that is that the wave now? I guess that's the wave now. Like you know 90s. I think for me, 90s was the best era. Of and and now you see, you see Cardi B and what's the kid, uh, Bruno Mars. Right. They got that, that 90s that yeah, yeah. 90s song. They they supposed to be uh, doing the Martin over like. Yeah, yeah. I think just the 90s vibe was just so dope. Like, I still listen to 90s R&B in my too. truck. And my boy Dub would get in or uh, Brandon to get in and be like, yo, champ, come on, man. Come on, come on, come on. That made you more current. <laughs> you know, so, so you know, and, and I don't really, you know, everything is streaming now. So it's not like I have to go buy CDs or right. anything like that. So I'll just throw Pandora on and I'll, you know, oh, I, I listen to a lot of Meek. I like Meek, Meek. Meek, uh, like a lot of Meek, um, Drake, um, Nicki. Uh, I like I like Nicki. Nicki a dope rap artist. I know they, you know, Cardi got the Cardi got the wave right now, and and you know people always trying to pit them two together. I don't like like two female rappers can not coexist. Yeah. Two top female rappers can't coexist without there being some type of competition. But then I tell people like if you go back in the history of of hip hop. That everything was competition. There was no, yo, yo, Felix, I got this dope ass beat. I want you to get on my track. Right. I want you, I want you, I want you to jump on this song with me. 
Back in the day, it wasn't like that. Not at all. Like, everything was competition. So, I mean, so I guess uh, for women artists, it's, it's still like that, where uh, for the male artists, everything is, you know, more people, I guess the culture has, has uh, evolved and, you know, Everyone embraces each other now. It wasn't like that at one time, though. No, definitely not. It was more bat, yeah, more battle rap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? It wasn't like this, but um, that's the same thing I be telling my children, man. That's why I be like, nah, I, mean, I can't listen to none of this. I can, it's not. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's funny because they be like, but dad, you're gonna be photographing a lot of these people. That's business, but it's the same for <laughs> you. You think you think you come on? You think these 40, 50 year old white execs? At, at Sony or at whatever hip hop station on record company is popping right now, you think they listen to this shit? No. It's a paycheck to them. They know. They they they. I mean, I guess they 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 know what's selling right now. Mm-hmm. That what the general public is paying attention to is mostly our young younger generation. So you so we would so they. I mean, it's business to them. So they're right. So they got people who have an ear to the street and see what's going on. And they meet in their boardrooms and they're like, all right, well, this guy's doing this, this guy's doing that. He's coming up just to sound. The music is changing because every few years. Of course. Uh, so the sound of the music changes. Of course. So they, so it's like, all right, this is going to be the new way now. So they start bringing these guys up and then pushing them. And then, you know, a, you know, some people flop, but, you know, a lot of times, you know, these record executives get it right. It's like everybody always wanted to have a, a different sound. And now it seems like everybody's following like you said, the same way. Yeah. All right, well, you know, I appreciate the time today, my brother. Yeah. You know, thanks for coming in, brother. Thank you for being my first guest. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm comfortable with that number. Uh, you know, where could they follow you at or anything? Uh, Kendall Hope 456, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. I'm out there. All right, make sure you follow The Media City Studio on Instagram. And, of course, you can follow me on Felix and Tyler Jr. Thank you and have a great day. God bless.